Glory to God 
church. Amen. You can have a seat. Good morning. It is a joy and a blessing to be with you again this morning. It's good to see all of you. I feel like I'm coming home again. It's nice. Oh, you don't know the half of them. I'm going to be here several more weeks in June. So oh, maybe I wasn't supposed to tell you that. Keep it a secret. Maybe you'll show up on Sunday morning. Well, thank you for the invitation to come back. I, I appreciate uh, Pastor Jolene's willingness to uh, allow me to come here and, and share with you uh, this morning and for a few mornings in June. And um, I invite you into a time of prayer. Oh, uh, one thing I did want to say is for those of you who were saying, finally you're here and it's not raining, I was out between services and had to dry off my glasses when I came back in. So even, I think my string is intact, so the last uh, how many times I've been here, we've had rain or snow or both. <clears throat> no snow today, no snow. No. So will you spend some time with me in prayer? Gracious God, creator, sustainer, and redeemer of us all, we give you thanks and praise for your presence with us this day and for our ability to gather in your name and sing your holy praises. Gather around your throne and with each other and know that you are among us and that you call us as your people to be witnesses to the ends of the earth. Help us to know what it means to take that seriously and, and help us to find in our lives the gifts that you give to each one of us to share your love, mercy, and grace with this world. We offer this day our prayers on behalf of our neighbors whose needs are known to us. We pray for both sisters and brothers we know and for those who are strangers. We lift up those who are struggling physically, emotionally, or spiritually this day, who have illnesses that we can only imagine or can't even imagine. We place them before you. We pray for those who surround the struggling, the fallen, and the broken with care, 
with hope. And we pray for those who are grieving because of situations in their lives that were obliterated, lost, or have died. We pray for the people who have gone before us, who we miss today. And we thank you that they have helped make us who we are, as you help remake us in the image of Jesus. We pray for a world that is bent on violence, for people who live in the midst of bombs and bullets, who don't find peaceful places, who have trouble finding food. We pray for those who step into the midst of those situations to provide relief and calm, who look for ways to build peace and share hope. We pray a special prayer today for mothers, for those who have influenced our lives, and we pray that those influences have been glorious for you, for your sake, and that the shape of love that is in us because of our experiences with the mothers in our lives may look more and more like you as we open our arms to receive all of your children into your holy presence. We pray for this congregation as we wait on your presence, as we seek your word for our lives together, and as we look for the ways in which we can be a witness in this community and beyond. We pray for each one gathered here that we might find how we fit in to the work that you plan for us. We ask, O oh Lord, that you open our minds to understand the scriptures this day, so that when sin cripples our hope, we may discover the freedom of your forgiveness. When suffering and death overtake our lives, we may know the joy of the risen Christ. And when we feel abandoned, we may comprehend the power of the promised spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose holy name we pray. Amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Jesus, the name above every 
First scripture reading, the Second Testament lesson from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait 
there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. And the epistle lesson from the book of Luke Chapter 24, verses 44 to 53. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them, while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up to heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me, please? Risen and ascended Christ, you surround us with witnesses and send us the counselor who opens our minds to understand your teaching. Bless us with such grace that our lives may become a blessing for the world now and in the age to come. Amen. Even though... I am focusing the message today on the ascension of Jesus. I need to tip my hat to my mother on this Mother's Day by beginning with a story about her. Wait here for me, she said. I'll be back in a little minute. <laughs> my wife is laughing. Those became immortal words of my mother one day long ago when she pulled her car in at the store that she and my father owned and went inside to take care of something quickly. My two older brothers and I did not let her forget for a very long time. She may still remember it if I remind her of it. My brothers and I didn't let her forget that that day anyway, she defined little minute as 38 and a half minutes. To my recollection, 38 and a half minutes of three young boys in a car by themselves, and we quickly realized she wasn't coming back quickly. I won't describe you the details of what went on. That's probably better left unsaid. Let me just say we didn't sit there with our hands folded nicely on our laps singing fun songs until she returned. 
Cell phones and iPads hadn't even been dreamed of at that point, so we had nothing to distract us, to keep us busy while she was away. And it's a good thing that cars are hard to destroy when the engine's not running. Oh, well. Looking back on it now, I figure we wouldn't have gotten into as much mischief had she realized how long she would be gone and given us some tasks to do in the meantime. There's got to be something these three boys can do that's not destructive or maybe even a little bit constructive. She could have taken us in the store and given us jobs to do or she could have given us some activities for the car which probably wouldn't have worked out any better. But Joellen and I realized that on the days when we were both still at work and our four children were at home for a bit without us, we, could, we should always give them a list. Tell them what they were responsible for doing while waiting for us. And we even instructed them from time to time over the phone on how to do those jobs and we'd check on them and see if they were progressing. Sometimes that actually worked. Well, they are kids. I know what it was like. Sometimes it actually worked. Even if you allow for the distractions of food and phone, and yes, there were computers in those days, and, and TV. Jesus told his disciples to wait. Wait for the time that God has chosen to restore his kingdom to earth. Wait for the work to begin that God will give us to do until then. Wait for the power that God will give us to accomplish that work. But waiting is so hard, isn't it? We want things to be done right now. We want things to be the way we think they ought to be without delay. Especially when the waiting isn't always fun, when difficulties come along, when the promised time seems so distant, waiting gets extremely difficult. Joellen and I have often talked of what it would be like to retire and do more traveling and relaxing that, than there is time for when we're raising a family or working a job. The plans we made were so alluring that we often talked about how nice it would be to do it soon, right? Retire early. To find some way to afford to live without working to make a living anymore until we're this age. Well, until I'm this age, she looks much younger than I am, so don't, don't hang that on her. But we knew that like for most folks, that isn't really an option. There's a mortgage to pay, there are children to get through school, there's money to be set aside so that someday we won't need paychecks. But we still dreamed, we still planned, we still looked ahead, why? because we had hope and confidence in our future together. And that gave our present efforts purpose, made the present work worthwhile. That is what Jesus wants his disciples to have too, hope and confidence in their own futures and the promise of the kingdom for all of God's people so that the work we do here while we wait has purpose and is lived in the midst of hope. Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. We find it so difficult sometimes to face periods when not much is happening, periods when we must wait for a promise to be fulfilled, for an event that we are looking forward to to take place. The disciples found themselves in this kind of situation. They found themselves having to simply wait for Christ's promises to them to come true. They wanted Jesus to stay, but he could not. They wanted to go with him right away, but they could not. So they had to learn how to wait 
They had to be told to wait. In fact, Luke thought it was such an important thing. He not only ended his gospel with Jesus' words to the disciples to wait here, he started his account of the Acts of the Apostles with the very same words. You got to wait here. There's something coming that you will need in order to go from Jerusalem and proclaim the good news. They had to learn how to wait. For many, waiting is such a dreadful thing. I'm not good at waiting. I'm always off to the next task. I'm always trying to figure out what I need to fill my time each day with. I can't sit and read a book for a couple of hours each evening until I finish it. I read articles, either on my computer or in a magazine or in the newspaper. My life is lived in little snippets while I move on to the next thing quickly. I have a task list that I can't, always, can't ever seem to stick with one big task until it's done. I'm doing a little bit of a bunch of things. I tell my wife that's why I'm in the business I'm in. I sell a little bit of everything and a lot of nothing. That's sort of the way my life is lived. I do a little bit of everything and a lot of nothing because I am so impatient. I have such difficulty waiting for things to be completed. But that's a gift, isn't it? To learn how to wait and to know that God is going to complete things. Waiting is so hard. Ask any child who's walking through the toy department of a store and is told, wait until your birthday or wait until Christmas. But it doesn't have to be like that. Living between times, living between those occasions in which all of our minds and hearts and energy are absorbed in affairs of significance can in fact be quite wonderful. It can be a time in which we gain strength when we quietly grow and become prepared for what will come next. The prophet Isaiah phrased it this way, those who wait for the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up on wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And after I read, wrote those words in this meditation for today, I'm driving to church this morning, not even a half a mile from my house. And from the field that has been freshly mowed to the left of the road, an adolescent bald eagle takes off and flies right in front of my car and off into the sky. What a majestic sight and what an important reminder to me of waiting on the Lord so that I can renew my strength, so that I can mount up on wings like that eagle and run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Waiting is a positive thing. It's not a task. The time between the making of a promise and its fulfillment to us can be of such great benefit. It helps us to see it, to understand it, to know it in the depths of our being and become a part of it ourselves. The disciples heeded the word of the angel who asked them why they were looking up toward where Jesus had just departed from them. So they returned to Jerusalem as they had been commanded and they waited there for his promise to them to be fulfilled. And while they waited, they devoted themselves to prayer. Which leads us to another important part of learning how to live in the times between. Namely, while we wait, we are called to live as Christ has shown us how to live in obedience and in connection with him and the Father. When the disciples returned to Jerusalem, they stayed together. They, they joined themselves with the rest of those who knew Jesus and, they, and, and those who, who believed what Jesus was doing with Mary and Jesus' brothers and so many others. And they stayed together and prayed and in so doing prepared themselves for the job Jesus had told them they would be doing. The job he was going to give them once the Holy Spirit came upon them as he promised. There are many ways to prepare for what we believe is coming next. But in the end, for those who are seeking to do God's will and to see God's promises come true in their midst, 
prayer and devotion to the mind and will of God are the most important thing. Because they prepare us for the gift of the Holy Spirit. They open us to the power the Spirit is ready to bestow. This is the power that we need. All the wit and wisdom, all the strength and vision that we can muster on our own will not move us in the way that we should go. Notice the disciples' own question to Jesus of the, about the restoration of the earthly kingdom. And he says there's... So much more to it than that. You don't know what God has in mind and when God is going to unfold it. Much more to it than that. You need to wait. You need to be patient. You need to trust God. We have all read or heard of programs and plans and gimmicks that will improve our bodies or our minds. There's a list of practical solutions that will improve our marriage. There are steps to creating a better business. There are ministry models that will help us build a bigger church. But the real solution lies not in these kinds of things, but in having God's Spirit work through us. Because the future is now safely in Jesus' hands. We can have courage to face challenges with hope and peace. No matter how sudden the bends in this road and how terrible the paths may be that we have to travel, hope is ours because Jesus goes before us and has been at every turn so far. We can trust that he will continue to be there ahead of us every step of the way. What a wonderful gift it was for Megan to pay, play for us this morning. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. If I was smart, we would have just sat here for 20 minutes and meditated on that offertory. But you know me, I'm impatient. Moving on to the next task. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Nothing, nothing can keep, him, keep us from his love. Nothing. Nothing that crumbles under our feet. Nothing that crumbles in the parts of the world in which we move. Nothing that crumbles in the wider world around us. Nothing that crumbles within our own lives can keep us from the love of Jesus. Because of the resurrection and ascension of Jesus, we are free to live in a new reality. Where death and the threat of death no longer have dominion. Where the worst things that happen in our lives are never the last things. It's never the last. God has that word and God alone. We can live courageously even in a world where fighting is still going around us perpetuated by those who have not yet heard that the battle has been decided. We're free to experience a Jesus of the future who still breaks into our present world, giving himself to us anew, giving himself to us in the washing of baptism, giving himself to us as we get on our knees and serve one another in love, giving himself to us in our praying, in our worshiping, and in our waiting. We are called to live this future into the present as well. We don't know where Jesus is so much as we know that Jesus is with us. We don't know what the future will bring so much as we know that the future is safe in Jesus' hands. We can return to the world after our encounter with the risen one, our hearts and heads held high, rejoicing and worshiping and blessing God our task while we wait is to make ourselves ready to be used by the Spirit. So in the times between, in the times of waiting, remember our Lord's resurrection and his ascension into heaven to be at the right hand of God. Remember what he has done for you in the past and wait for the next act, the next promise to come true with a firm hope. Remember next week we'll be celebrating the, the culmination of that promise, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Remember to wear red. Remember that all of that is important to help us become who God 
wants us to be. My mother was gone far longer than we expected her to be gone. But guess what? My brothers and I were still in the car when she came back. None of us had broken bones either. I don't know how that happened. We knew she'd be back. And we knew that the rest of our family's plans for the day would be accomplished. Why? Because we trusted her. We knew her word to be true. While you wait for the Spirit to lead you to the next part of your journey, even if it takes longer than you expect it to take, even if those little minutes become little millennia, trust the Lord with all your being. And live this day as he asks you to. Close to him, close to one another in worship and prayer, readying yourselves to proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins in his name to all the nations, beginning right where you live. Let us pray. Oh God, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, and we thank you that we could see enough of him here in this, on this earth that we could recognize his work when it returned to us, his spirit when it came among us, and your desire when it fills us. And that's what we pray for, O oh Lord, that you might fill us with your desire, with your spirit, that you might draw us into that holy work of repentance and forgiveness of sins so that all the world might come to know that nothing can separate them from the love of God. In Christ Jesus our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing together, church. He knows my thoughts, the things that no one sees. He knows my heart, it's every broken piece. Somehow still, I'm held by this one thing. Somehow still, I'm held by this one thing.
Now, as we go forth, I invite you to join me in the benediction for this day. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.
Finding myself at a loss for words And the funny thing is, it's okay The last thing I need is to be heard But to hear what you would say Word of God speak Would you pour down like rain Washing my eyes to see Your majesty To be still and know That you're in this place Please let me stay and rest In your holiness Word of God speak Finding myself in the midst of you Beyond the music, beyond the noise All that I need is to be with you And in the quiet, hear your voice Thing is, it's okay.